Hello everyone. Could your GoPro be used as a remote ID module? First of all, I have to say that this is not my idea. I first came across this, I think it was yesterday morning on Facebook. And uh, Facebook being Facebook, there's no way I can find that post again. But then later on yesterday, later in, later in the afternoon, I came across it again in the Ciadi uh, FPV's Discord server. Uh, as far as I know, it might have been the same person. I really have no idea since I can't find the original Facebook post. Uh, but they were asking the question, is your GoPro uh, able to be a remote ID module? And I thought that was a really interesting question because if you could take your GoPro and if it could actually be the remote ID module that you put on your drone and you know, most of us have a GoPro that we move between a mu multiple drones, um, that's not going to require any additional hardware. And that sounded like a great idea. Maybe that would be one way that some people would choose to comply with remote ID. So let's dig into it and look at what the remote ID module requirements are and see if a GoPro can meet all of these requirements. So before we get into that document, um, what a lot of people don't know is that the GoPro Black series, the GoPro Hero Blacks from the Hero 5 up have a built-in GPS. And since they have a built-in GPS and they also have built-in 2.4, or some have 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi chips in them, it seems like they might have all the hardware necessary to comply with remote ID. Or GoPro could, I suppose, consider adding what they need to make it happen in some future GoPro module or GoPro model, because uh, you know the remote ID module requirements don't come into effect until roughly September 15th, I think, of 2023. So there, there's definitely some time there. But just as a thought exercise, let's take a look at like I have a GoPro Hero 8 Black. Could this, if there were some firmware update for it? actually comply with uh, the requirements for remote ID. Okay, so here is the remote ID final ruling document from the FAA, and these are the minimum performance requirements that a broadcast module would have to have. And first of all, it has to be able to, the remote identification broadcast module must be capable of determining the takeoff location of the unmanned aircraft. So the GoPro has a built-in GPS, and yeah, it's annoying. You have to wait a few minutes for it to lock on on all of the satellites. But let's say that a firmware update made it so that uh, when you hit the record button, it sort of stored the GPS location of the GoPro at the time that you hit that, and then it could use that for the continuous remote ID broadcast. So it seems like it could meet that uh, first requirement. Uh, time mark, the time, uh, the message elements must be synchronized with all the other remote ID messages. So it has a, a clock in it, so it should be able to have all of the messages synchronized with the time. Self-testing and monitoring. Prior to takeoff, the remote ID broadcast module must automatically test the remote identification functionality and notify the person manipulating the controls of the unmanned aircraft system of the results of the test. So this one's a little bit trickier. I'm not exactly sure how a module is expected to test its own functionality. Does that mean it's going to have to have two radios, one for broadcasting and one for detecting that there's a broadcast, view its own broadcast, and verify? Uh, I'm not exactly sure how the FAA expects that to happen, but I could imagine that the GoPro could have a series of beeps that let you know whether it did the self-test and whether it's working or not. Um, that one's at least plausible, but not perfectly clear. Uh, the remote identification broadcast module must continuously monitor the remote identification functionality from takeoff to shutdown and must provide notification of the malfunction or failure to the person manipulating the flight controls of the unmanned aircraft system. Again, that one's a little bit tricky. Uh, it, well, if it can monitor it before takeoff, it can monitor it during the entire flight. Uh, but how does it get that information back to the pilot? Obviously, if you're an FPV pilot, you would love to be able to have that information in your OSD. And currently, there's no connection between the GoPro and your flight controller or your video transmitter. Um, but again, I think maybe it's possible that they could meet these requirements by having the GoPro beep. Um, but I'm curious in the future what 
solutions do come up for the broadcast module to make this work for other drones as well. Uh, here, number D, or number D, letter D, tamper resistance. Uh, the remote identification broadcast module must be designed and produced in a way that reduces the ability of a person to tamper with the remote identification functionality. In general, I'd say a GoPro is fairly tamper resistant. You know, the average person isn't going to be able to mess with it too well. Error correction, that's just sort of built into the way it's going to be able to broadcast the message elements and the standard that they follow for that. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Interference considerations. This one's another tricky one. Remote identification broadcast module must not interfere with other systems or equipment installed on compatible unmanned aircraft. And other systems or equipment installed on compatible unmanned aircraft must not interfere with remote identification equipment. So the way it is today, I know some people do have problems with their GoPro if it's on 2.4 gigahertz interfering with their control link on 2.4 gigahertz. And in my case, uh, I was running this GoPro with the DJI system and I was using the DJI controller on 5.8 gigahertz. So I set the GoPro to only use 2.4. Um, now I'm using Crossfire, which is 900 megahertz for control, and 5.8 gigahertz with my DJI FPV. So again, I leave the GoPro at 2.4 gigahertz, so it's not an issue, but it definitely can be a problem for someone. And most people do have, or a lot of people have 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 coming out of their drones. And even if you're not using 2.4, just having an antenna that's broadcasting that close can cause interference. So. This is going to be a difficult one for all modules, not necessarily just specifically to GoPros. So message broadcast. The remote identification broadcast module must be capable of broadcasting the message elements using a non-proprietary broadcast specification, blah, blah, blah. It has to use radio frequency spectrum compatible with personal wireless devices. And so this is where the remote ID is basically saying it's got to use 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz uh, broadcast so that today's modern mobile devices, think cell phones, are able to pick up the signal. And this is why people think that the GoPro should be able to do this because the new GoPros do have 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz chips in them, so they should be able to broadcast a signal. Next up is the remote identification broadcast module must be designed to maximize the range at which the broadcast can be received. This one, um, yeah, I don't know how the FAA is going to deal with this because maximizing the range, does that mean it has to have an external antenna? Does that mean it's going to have to be designed in such a way that it can get more range than the GoPro has? The GoPro I wouldn't say has great 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz range. The antennas are sort of built in and tucked away inside, so they're not maximized. But then again, I'm curious to see what other module manufacturers in the future come up with for solutions to this and what the FAA approves. So then it comes down to the message elements performance requirements. So oh, did I skip what are in the message elements? Where was that? Yeah, so here are the message elements that have to be broadcast. It has to identify the identity of the unmanned aircraft consisting of a serial number assigned to the remote identification broadcast module by the person responsible for the production. So theoretically, GoPro could follow the standard the FAA says you have to have for a serial number and put that into the GoPro, and the GoPro could broadcast that serial number, and you as a pilot would register that serial number to yourself so that the FAA knows it belongs to you. It has to have an indication of the latitude, longitude, and altitude of the unmanned aircraft, and since it has a GPS built into the GoPro, seems like that should be possible. And it has to have an indication of the velocity of the unmanned aircraft, which again, it should be able to get from the GPS module and the indication of the latitude longitude of the takeoff location and altitude of the takeoff location. Like I mentioned earlier, in my head, I'm imagining when you hit the record button on the GoPro, it could start, uh, it could save that location and then broadcast that as it's flying around. And then the, the time mark again, it, it has a clock built in, so it knows what time it is. That gets a little bit tricky because I've noticed the GoPros don't keep the best time and I have to synchronize it with my cell phone fairly regularly. Um, let's see, is there anything else interesting here? 
So it talks about how accurate the GPS position information is, which I don't know exactly how accurate a GoPro's GPS is, but I feel like it's got to be within these 100 feet accuracy with 95% probability. And let's see, it must broadcast this GPS information no later than one second from the time measurement of the time of broadcast. So that all comes down to whether the GoPro's got good enough hardware to be able to do that quickly. And it has to broadcast them at a rate of at least one message per second. So, you know, just what you want is your GoPro <clears throat> spewing out broadcast every second using even more battery, right? So that's pretty much all there is to it. It sure seems like it's plausible at the very least that a GoPro could be used as your remote identification module on your drones. Um, definitely would be buying some other module that is maybe half the size of a GoPro that you would stick on your drone and uh, add additional weight and cost to it if, for those people like me who already are using a GoPro. It seems like a great idea. If the FAA really wants people to comply, having more options like a GoPro would be more likely to get a lot of people to comply. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people who will say, screw this, I'm not going to comply either way. And that's fine too. I, well, <laughs> that's people will do what people will do. Um, but I, I do think giving people more options is a good idea. Uh, I didn't... GoPro really hasn't been super friendly to the FPV community lately, especially since they got rid of the Hero 5 session a long time ago. Uh, but they do post YouTube video or videos on GoPro all the time about FPV, so they're definitely paying attention. Um, but I just don't know that they'll take the time and resources necessary to create firmware for a GoPro that would meet remote ID requirements. And bigger yet, uh, the requirements for production and going, getting them certified and going through the whole process with the FAA, that seems very costly and time consuming and not necessarily something GoPro will do for such a small community. Now, on the other hand, uh, we've seen some promising results from the Instas360 company uh, and working with Beta FPV and creating that naked Insta360 camera. Maybe somebody over there would decide to make their camera work as a remote ID module. So, what do you guys think? Would you use a special firmware on your GoPro that turned it into a remote ID broadcast module? It seems like a good idea to me. Um, if you happen to know anybody at GoPro or got any contacts there, why don't you let them know and see what they think about it? I'd be really curious to hear what GoPro's thoughts are on this. And if you have any other thoughts, ideas, questions about this, definitely let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.